Logan, everyone. So today I am going to be showing you how I keep my acrylic paint swatches. So this is sort of a blend of products here from the fountain pen world <laughs> and the uh, mixed media art world because what I've done my swatches on are these Coloring ink testing books. And these are traditionally used for fountain pen ink, but I have found that they actually work really, really well for a variety of media. I actually have used these Coloring books for not only the acrylic inks, which I'll go through in this video, or, or uh, the acrylic paints. I've also used them for acrylic inks um, and for water soluble inks and that sort of thing. So they're really good for a variety of media to make swatches with. And then you don't have to make all these individual cards yourself. So the reason why I ended up making all of these swatches of all my acrylic paints, which you can see there are quite a few, which I've accumulated over the years. And this includes all of my craft acrylics as well as my artist grade acrylics. Um, so as many of you know, and I've mentioned before, I have been taking this class called Fodder School. And it has been the most enjoyable art class I have ever taken online, at least, um, maybe even ever <laughs> in person or online. Um, and it's just been so inspirational in a variety of ways. Uh, some of the techniques that we learn can come off as kind of simple at first, but they're really, really um, eye opening and really inspirational to create different works. So I have really been enjoying it. There is actually a Fodder School 2 coming up um, starting in, I guess, October of 2022. Because um, I entered in October of 2021 for Fodder School, which is now Fodder School 1. And then there will be a Fodder School 2. So I, I'm going to put a link down below. I am not affiliated with them whatsoever, and I don't get a commission of any kind, but I have just so thoroughly enjoyed that class that I feel like if you're at all interested in mixed media and collage, um, it is a great class and it teaches you so much. Um, I'm really looking forward to the second year. I'm hoping that I learn just as much in year two as I learned in year one, but well, that remains to be seen. But anyway, one of the, one of the, <laughs> months so we there's a new there's two lessons every month one where you make the materials that you're going to make your final project with and then the second half of the month is making your final project so one of the months um suggested that we make swatches of our uh, materials specifically acrylic um paints i keep wanting to say acrylic inks these are acrylic paints <laughs> i do have acrylic inks which i can show you if you're interested in those swatches as well um, but one of the classes suggested that we do uh, swatches of our acrylic paints and, and any other media that we like to have handy. And this has been one of the most useful things that I have done for my art practice um, probably ever because it, it, it allows me to sift through the colors and pick different uh, color stories, um, use a limited palette by just picking out a few colors that I like, see how they go together. Um, also, I just know what I have. Um, and then I know that I have actually a lot of similar colors. Uh, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to go through these quickly. I'm not going to focus on each and every one, but I will just kind of show you how I have this set up and, and, you know, do a quick flip through of these. Um, and then if you have any questions about anything in particular that you see here or the setup or anything, you can ask down below and I will answer when I can. But um, but yeah, but choosing colors for art projects has been so much easier when doing this because before I would just look through my acrylic paints and be like, I don't know, is this going to look good with this? I don't know. Um, but now I can put them together. This, this of course, doesn't show you what things are going to look like uh, mixed together but it, um, it's definitely a start in the right direction. So I have broken up my acrylic paints, and this one's getting pretty large. This is all just my regular standard colors. And then this, I've included all of my black, white, and metallic paints. So because I do have quite a few different, and this is actually, the first one is actually a very interesting one. This was a limited edition from Jackson's Art Supply. They released this, uh, what's called Scorched Earth which is made out of ash, essentially. Um, I don't know how friendly it is, but you know, the ash would have just 
gone in the garbage, I guess, but they used it for paint and it's actually a really interesting black. It has a matte texture and it does actually look a little different. I don't know if you can tell that here, but it does look a dif different from other black uh, paints. So I do have quite a few blacks um, in different, um, different finishes. Like this is a flat black. This is a Liquitex Basics black, which actually is flatter than you would think and is great for multi-use black. Um, and there, here's an acrylic gouache. Here's a golden fluid, which is a little more shiny. Um, a Studio 71, which is a, um, which is basically a student grade. Uh, Liquitex Basics again in ivory black. Do I have two ivory blacks? No, because that one's Mars black. Yeah, and you know, I probably couldn't tell you the difference between. Well, I think I think ivory black is a little less. Um, opaque and seriously black than Mars black. Um, but this lets me see, you know, the differences in these. Um, this is just a craft acrylic, one of those little cheapy, like $2 bottles. Um, and then here I have a metallic black. And then I have all my whites here, which I probably should have put like a line or something back behind to give you a sense of um, how opaque each white is because. Oftentimes when you want white, you want opaque white. Um, so it would have been helpful for me to do that. One thing that does kind of help with that is um, before I did these swatches, I went through with a template, with a, with a rectangular template and drew the template line in pencil. So some of these are over the pencil line. So that somewhat helps you, you see how opaque it is. So I kind of go by that. But here's all my whites, and I don't know why I have so many whites, but um, I'm trying to kind of use up the ones that I think are not all that great, <laughs> um, just in random projects so that I can, you know, just use that up. And then here we have some metallics, some old Daniel Smith metallics, which aren't even available anymore. They've been discontinued. They're All their acrylic inks are discontinued. Um, I managed to find some on Mercari, one time and I was like super excited because they're still good um, and they have really nice colors. So here you go. So I just have all of these different brands and colors, um, you know, craft acrylics and uh, student grade and artist grade. Um, and they each have their uses, right? Um, and sometimes you know, a, a craft acrylic is just as good to use for any particular purpose as a an artist grade. Um, one thing that I re oh, so this is one of my favorites, uh, a bronze watercolor. Um, and actually, let me see. Okay, so these two that are right next to each other are actually my favorites, and these are artist grade. So these are both by Golden. This iridescent gold coarse. So I um, put some gloves on for a particular project and I was like basically smearing this ink over some collage papers and it's really kind of silly, but the feel of that paint on a gloved hand over papers was just like so satisfying. And I think it's because it has a little bit of grit in here, um, a little bit of texture. I really, really loved that. Um, so it's really cool. Um, I, I'm very tactile and I really like the feel of different things. So that was something that was kind of like, Ooh, I like that. Um, and I do have a little bit of the ASMR thing going on. So textures can sometimes do that. Um, but this one, if you have ASMR, uh, tendencies, this particular one is super awesome to feel. Um, and they, this brand also has like a fine as opposed to a coarse, but the coarse is the one I prefer. And this one is also really awesome because this is uh, called Iridescent Bronze, also by Golden. And it has green, it has a green pigment in it. So it, when you, if you do it lightly or you try, you like wipe it off so that it's a little bit worn, you really get the um, sort of aged bronze look because of the green underneath, which I think is really, really cool. All right. And then a lot of these also I inherited from, um, well, not inherited, but um, they were sort of passed on to me from um, a family member who was moving into a smaller house, more of an extended family member, moving into um, 
a smaller house and they were getting rid of a lot of their art supplies. So I took a lot of the acrylic ink, uh, acrylic paints, not inks. I'll do the acrylic inks in the future if you want to. So I did put a mark under these. These are all um, either, well, this one's just iridescent, um, but some of these are interference. And basically interference colors are really kind of cool. Um, the basic concept is you, you can move them around and depending on the angle, you'll either get one color or it's complement. So like here, this is interference green, but so you'll get green in one light and then you'll get red, which is complement in other light. So see there, there it looks green to you and then now it looks red. And this actually creates a really neat effect on black paper, but it, you can also paint over other colors of paint and it really creates interesting effects. You just kind of have to play with it and see. And there are various different colors of interference. This is blue, You would, so your, your complement would be orange, but I'm not really sure you see much orange in there. Um, and then this one's violet, and so you would get green on the end, or, you know, greenish. But those are fun to play with. Um, and then these are just sort of some metallic colors, mostly craft acrylics. Um, these I use sparingly, but sometimes they come in handy. And then I do have some fluorescents that I've been trying to play with a little bit. I did have some craft fluorescents already, but um, I got these Holbein heavy body acrylic fluorescents, which are really cool. Um, and this is a soft body Liquitex fluorescent. Um, all really interesting. The Holbein are, are really cool. The, the one problem with fluorescent paints is that they're generally not very light fast. So they're better for things like a sketchbook or if you're gonna be putting like a heavy UV coating over the top of your finished work. And then here's some glitter paints, which are obviously craft grade. Um, I don't use these very often at all, but um, I might more now that I have the reference to see what they look like. All right, so that's black, white, and metallics, and then these are just regular colors. So, and I'll, I'll pick out some highlights here. One highlight is Acrylic Wash by Holbein. This particular gray I really love. It's gray number two, um, but their whole line of acrylic gouaches are really, really nice. They're really nice to paint with. They have a really good texture. Um, they, they flow really well and brush onto the the surface that you're using really easily. So I really, really recommend Holbein acrylic wash. The only problem is they do tend to be a little expensive um, because like I, I only have the smaller sizes. They do come in larger sizes, but um, it's like $6 for a fairly small tube. So, but they're really nice and they're really pigmented. So they go a long way. And, and actually these are pretty close in color. This one's a little warmer and this is just a craft acrylic works pretty well. So I have grays at the beginning here, then I go into some Pames gray. Um, another brand, which I've actually done some swatching of before on the channel is Matisse, which is an Australian brand of acrylic paints. These I've really grown to love. Um, I only have their more structured, what they call structure, um, more of a heavy body paint um, and they're they're really really nice this one tends to be kind of matte but you know it depends on the color okay so this is something that I did want to bring, bring up so these are Dina Wakely brand uh, acrylics they're you know I guess they're technically like craft grade acrylics but I have not been a big fan um, they tend to be a little bit glossy and they don't give a lot of coverage and I found that if I try to mix them or put them together on a page they get really sort of dark and uh, muddy looking like they all kind of blend together and they don't really pop anymore so not the biggest fan I had gotten some because I'd seen so many people use them uh, I think maybe sparingly just one on its own or something in in a spread or in a journal or something would be okay but the brand as a whole, I probably won't buy anymore. I'll probably just go with Golden, Liquitex, you know, the, the, the good ones when I buy new ones. Um, so this is the So Flat by Golden, which is a fairly new product, and it is very, very flat, which is really nice and has its uses, um, as you can see compared to this one, which is, um, this is more of a student grade, which has 
Although this says artist acrylic. I don't know. The Soho brand, I've only seen them at uh, Jerry's Artorama here in the States, and um, they're just okay. They're very shiny. I don't tend to like very shiny acrylics. It, I, to me, it makes it look kind of cheap, um, regardless of the expense. Okay, and this is Liquitex Soft Body. Um, and Sennelier acrylics are also really, really nice. They're really, really pigmented. Even though they're a little bit on the expensive side, they're artist acrylics, which is, I think, it called acrylic, or, you know, however you say that in French. Um, they're really, really nice. I, I really like the Sennelier. Um, Golden and Liquitex are sort of a standby. Those are the ones that are always good. I prefer Golden over um, Liquitex, but then each brand has some colors that the other doesn't have, so that's kind of nice. Um, and this is a new brand to me. I haven't even painted with it. I've only done the swatches. I got these maybe last week or the week before um, by Nova Color. They're really fairly inexpensive for what you get. And uh, the colors seem really super pigmented. And just doing these swatches, it flows really, really nicely. So that's um, something that you might want to check out if oops sorry I'm moving my camera around I'm trying to zoom in a little bit I realize I'm a little far away so that might be a little better for you um again that's more Soho brand which is super shiny and just not really my thing um oh and of if you're gonna go with an acrylic gouache I would not go with the Liquitex I would go with the um Holbein over the Liquitex because the the Liquitex, um, depending on what I put it on, it, it's had some strange qualities. Like I've tried to use it on a jelly plate before, for example, and it has a really hard time coming off the jelly plate, whereas the acrylic gouache works just fine. Um, so just some weird little quirks. I also feel like the Liquitex doesn't cover as well as the Holbein. Um, I mean, obviously it's always going to depend on your pigment, whether it's opaque or translucent, but Pigments that should be opaque aren't as opaque as I would like, I think. And as you can see, I have a lot of ultramarine blue and I don't really use ultramarine blue. So I'm gonna try and use up some of those. I mean, that's the other thing. Once you know what you have, you can really try and use them and play with them. Um, so let's see. Folk Art is a, is, is a fairly well-known craft acrylic. These watercolor craft acrylics by Folk Art are terrible. I hate them. <laughs> I got these, um, I think I got them on Zulily when they were like super on sale. Back when Zulily actually had really good sales. Um, they don't so much anymore. Um, I, I got these thinking, oh, well, maybe I can use this like instead of watercolor and then it would be permanent. Um, but they're so streaky and just, ugh. And, and I think they're basically just saying, oh yeah, it's watercolor so that they can get away with using less pigment. Um, so I would not get the watercolor craft acrylics by Folk Art. They're not good. Okay, so this is another brand that I've really, really been liking, which is the Charvin Extra Fine Acrylic. They have really beautiful colors. Um, they're, uh, the quality is really amazing. But again, they're probably on par price-wise with Sennelier, so a little more on the pricey side. But you get so much more with the artist grade acrylics. Um, they go a long way. They last forever because you only need to use a little bit because a little goes a really long way. Um, this is one color that's really, really nice in the Charvin is this primary cyan. I've used this in a recent project and really, really liked it. Um, I don't think I've used... So this is, this is like one of the paints that I... Um, was gifted by the extended family family member, um, and I haven't used the heavy body uh, in the tubes that often. Most of what I got from from her were in tubes, golden heavy body, and Liquitex. Um, and you'd be surprised how long those paints last. Like she had paints for like probably over a decade or more, and I would say ninety, like maybe ninety five percent of them are still really great and usable. Only five percent were kind of shot and had to be thrown away. Maybe even less than that. So if you ever see used acrylic paint that's old, you know, um, obviously make sure you're not paying full price for it unless it's a limited color or whatever, but they'll probably still be good for the most part unless they were stored in some 
weird place. I've been talking a lot and I am so thirsty, so I'm going <laughs> to, my throat's getting a little dry, so I'm going to drink here. I have some fizzy water off to the side. This is another of the Nova Color. Um, the jars did not have the pigment numbers because I've been trying to put the pigment numbers when I have them here. Um, I'm pretty sure they have the pigment numbers on their website, so I'll probably go back and add those because um, I do like to have those. And one of the other great things about having the pigment numbers on the cards is I can see which paints are pretty much identical as far as pigment composition. Um, this is another, it's a mixture, but it's one of the colors that I really like, this azurite hue. Um, it's sort of an, it's not even coming off the way it does. It's a little more greenish in real life. Not so much, it looks almost like an ultramarine on the camera here, but um, really pretty. Prussian blue is a new, is a color, not a new color. It's a color that I've been liking a lot lately. Um, and phthalo blue red shade, which I really love. I don't know if I have, there's green shade. Let's see, do I have a red shade? I thought I did. Well, I have one in here somewhere, but the red shade is really nice. Um, I've always liked it in watercolor. And now I'm starting to like it a lot more in um, acrylic as well. And, you know, colors like this, which are, because you can see here, this is just PW6, which is a white, and PB15, colon 3. So you could get the phthalo blue, which is probably just the 15, colon 3, have some PW6, which is white, mix this color. But this is a really nice convenience color, which is why I have those. And some of these, again, were gifted to me, so... Let's see, more Sennelier, Golden Fluid. So fluid versus heavy body, I tend to prefer the fluid um, just because it has a really nice texture and you're getting just as much pigment as you are in the heavy body paints for Golden, um, but I just prefer that texture. Here's another acrylic wash, um, really nice and opaque and just a really beautiful texture. Another acrylic wash and ice green. Um, Nova color. Uh, yeah, Deco Art is another craft acrylic brand. And then again, this is the Dina Wakely brand. The Dina Wakely is also really shiny. And I've already kind of said I don't like super shiny on my acrylic paints. I like more of a, either like a satin finish, which is what I would consider this, because it's not entirely flat or matte but it's not shiny really either. I like that and then um, the matte, but yeah, shiny I'm not a big fan of. So, and this, okay, so this is, this is probably one of the 5% that had gone a little south, but I'm still keeping this one because I think it's still usable and it doesn't smell bad, it's not moldy or anything. Um, but what what happens to the very small number of tubes that are bordering on or, or are unusable, the pigment had separated from the binder. That's, that's really the problem. Um, I probably could reintegrate them somehow, but you know, it's, it's too much trouble. I've, I've thrown away a couple of tubes that were worse than this as far as the separation. Um, but this one I kept because I think it could still be used. Okay, and this is a Studio 71 brand, which is um, uh, student grade again, but you can see how much more transparent this is than say, this is thalo green and this is thalo green in golden. So I don't know if this is the same pigment because it didn't have the pigment number on there, but assuming it, if, if it is, I mean, that's just like night and day as far as quality goes. Um, whites, you could probably get away with getting a craft acrylic, but one of the problems with white is if you do want it to be really opaque, your craft acrylic is not going to be as opaque as uh, an artist grade because you're getting more pigment in um, the artist grade. So some really beautiful dark greens. And here's more of that watercolor <laughs> craft acrylic. Oh, I hate this stuff so much. <laughs> I probably should just throw it away because I'm, I'll probably never use it. It just would be frustrating to me. So here we go. 
Um, this is one of my favorite colors, this Titan Pale, Titan Green Pale from Golden. Um, it's similar to Parchment from Liquitex, which is another one that a lot of mixed media artists use to be kind of like the color of older paper. This is a little more green than the Liquitex, but they're both, they both would have a sort of a similar use. Um, green Gold. Chartreuse. I'm really loving these brighter yellows. And as it turns out, I have a ton of these sort of standard primary yellows. Um, I like, I also really like the more um, warm yellows, sort of like the uh, cadmium yellow medium, Indian yellow. Those are all really nice. Um, and Naples yellow, which is lighter, is also nice. It's another one of those acrylic washes. Um, I'm trying to see if I have any other uh, different brands that you might not have seen. Um, there's a lot of repeat brands, as you can see. Uh, more Sennelier. I think there might be some one-offs the more I get in here. Let me... Uh, this is Quinacridone Nickel Azo Gold, which is a favorite among most people that work with acrylic paint. It actually is a little bit shinier than I would normally like, but I still really love the color, so I'm willing to forgive that. Uh, let's see. I'm actually going to move that like that so it'll be easier. Apple Barrel, that's another craft acrylic brand. Uh, they're actually pretty decent for a craft acrylic brand. Um, more Dina Wakely. Um, yeah, just, just not a fan. And the texture is a little weird. All of them tend to have this sort of... Um, little bit of a rough texture. I don't know if you can see that really. Yeah, there you go. Um, which is just kind of weird to me. I, I like smoother paints as well. And with this too, I really learn which, um, which sort of lower quality paint will work well, um, just as well as artist quality. Some of them, some of them work pretty well. Yeah, maybe I don't really have many other brands in here. Oh, here's a Windsor & Newton. Um, so that this is kind of a one-off. I don't have any other Windsor & Newton. I got it because I was really interested in seeing what a potter's pink would look like in acrylic. Um, it's a little streaky and weird, but like it's not that unusual for potter's pink, in my opinion. I mean, I use potter's pink a lot in watercolor. And so I just kind of wanted to try it. I've actually not painted with it yet. So um, it be interesting to try that out at some point. Let's see. And a lot of these I got in sets with sort of smaller bottles, like the soft, um, not the soft body, but the Liquitex acrylic wash I got in a set of smaller bottles from Amazon. Sometimes you can get some really great deals. Oh, this is another one-off. Um, the Schmincke, um acrylic. I really like the Schmincke acrylics. They're kind of expensive and they have a limited color range. So I got this one because I thought this would be kind of a unique color and it's it's nice. I like it. Um, yeah, so what I was saying is you can actually get really great deals from time to time on Amazon. I tend to follow items that I'm looking at, looking for to get that are available on Amazon and basically I just kind of stock those items until they go down in price <laughs> to a point where um, I will buy them. And Amazon probably knows that because they probably know everything about my, my buying habits. <laughs> okay. And so this is another one-off. It's Blick Artist Acrylic. I was kind of going on a light pink kick. I really got a bunch of them. A lot of them are very similar now that I have them all, but I, I really have been using them a lot. Um, they're all probably variants on what you would get with this light portrait pink from Liquitex, which is sort of a another standard color that a lot of people like to use. But um, this is the Shell Pink in Acrylic Wash by Holbein. Uh, very similar, but I think they do have, you know, some different qualities. Um, yeah, that's the Charbon. 
Dale or Rowney System 3. I think they're technically, they, they might actually be between artist grade and uh, student grade, uh, but they actually have a lot of really nice colors and they're, and they're nice to use. I think they would be perfectly acceptable for someone just getting into acrylics who wants to use something that's still pretty quality. Uh, and they're less expensive, so that might be a good way to get in to acrylics if you don't have a lot already. Um, Amsterdam acrylics, these are also pretty nice. The, the Even their lower grades tend to be pretty nice. I think this is actually just the standard, which is, um, again, probably in between artist grade and student grade. Um, but they have some nice, interesting colors. Uh, oh, this is Lascaux, which is another... Um, French brand, I think it's French, that is available on uh, Jackson's, and I just kind of wanted to try this one-off color. It's all right, but I mean, I'm, I'm on a pink kick, so I like, I like pink <laughs> these days. Um, so I have a lot of really interesting pink colors these days. Um, violet is something that, I, and, and purple are not colors I use very often, so I kind of would like to get into that more. Um, okay, so someone had actually asked me to swatch this Matisse Ash Pink. So um, here it is, if you're watching. Um, it's showing off as being a little bit more bright than it is in person. I would say it almost looks a little browner in person. It's really a lovely color. Um, this is another favorite of mine, this Titan Violet Pale by Golden. Again, it's a convenience color, but uh, first off, I don't know which PR 101 they use because there's a variety of PR 101s. Um, and it's just, it's it's a really great color. It's good for mixing and it's just good for using on its own. Um, and these are some good neutrals. Um, and Titanium Buff or Titan Buff by Golden is another one of my favorites. Uh, it's not a mix. It's actually just like un, um, unbleached titanium paint. Uh, so it's really kind of nice to use as a mixing color instead of stark white if you want a little bit more of a different quality. It's hard to explain. Okay, I'm getting, it's getting so full here. <laughs> um, let's see, do we have any other brands? We might not. That might be it. Yep. And this, okay, so this is a really weird color. This is uh, San Elie's Sepia. It is just the weirdest color. I mean, it's like... <laughs> Um, I'm, I'm going to be polite and say it's just a really yucky green, but, um, yeah, that was a weird one. All right. So there is the flip through. That was probably more than you ever wanted of all my acrylic swatches. Let me know if you want me to do my acrylic inks as well. And I'll set that aside for a separate video. Um, I'll wait to film that until I hear from you, um, to see if you're interested, because I know fewer people have been interested in acrylics and acrylic products but I know some of you are interested. What I probably will line up regardless is my watercolor swatches, and that might actually need to be a couple of separate videos because I have so many watercolors and so many different swatches. I have not done the watercolors on the coloring. I, I did do them all on watercolor paper and cut all my own, um, cut all my own swatch paper and used a stamp. Here I can show you sort of a preview of that. So I've done a lot of these swatches on the channel. I used to have them all in a traveler's notebook or several traveler's notebooks in uh, little card folders, but I have since decided to do the same convention as the acrylic paints and put, um, put holes in these with a hole punch and just put them on a little ring. And this is a much easier way to use these. Um, cause again, you can compare colors and put them up next to each other. Um, but you know, I can always put them back into those folders if I want to at some point, but that's a little preview of those, which I will do at some point in the future. Well, that's all I had for you today. Feel free to ask me any questions about any of these and I'll answer when I can. Uh, feel free to subscribe to keep track of future videos on my channel. If you enjoy this video, give it a like. I hope to see you next time, but in the meantime, have a great day. Thanks so much. Bye.